So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24. In today's video, we have the Chicago Bulls. Last season, the Bulls went 40 and 42. It was good enough for a play-in spot. It was not good enough for a playoff spot, however. They did not end up winning in the play-in, and they ended up being the 10 seed in the Eastern Conference. Now, I don't want to be too harsh, but I do want to be honest. I don't know, looking at the landscape of the NBA right now, if there are too many teams in as bad of a position as the Chicago Bulls. I'll give you more of my thoughts on that in just a second. It'll all make sense to you, I promise. But right now, right now I'm talking about the future of the Chicago Bulls is not very bright. As always, let me know any other video ideas down below in the comments section. I've been really enjoying kind of these normal rebuilds so far into 2K24. Obviously, it's still relatively new. So if I have not done your rebuild of your favorite team, let me know that down below in the comments section along with any other video ideas. We can always get into some challenges, anything you guys do want to see. So yeah, man, I know I just came out with a very bold statement about the Bulls. It'll make more sense in just a few minutes, but... My God, man, this team needs to pick a direction. So I'm going to do that for them today. Let's get into it. Now, I want to explain to you real quick why I think the Chicago Bulls are in one of, if not the worst positions in all of basketball right now. Typically, you want to be on either end of the spectrum, either a true serious contender like the top teams in all of basketball. Typically, there's a handful of them. There's probably about six, seven, eight teams that are true championship contenders every single season. Or what you want to do is you want to completely suck. You want to tank, you want to get those high draft picks, those young prospects that have a lot of potential. What you don't want to do is what the Bulls have been doing for a few years now. You are stuck in the middle of no man's land. You have an aging star in DeMar DeRozan, an overpaid star in Zach Levine, an injured Lonzo Ball, and you just gave Nikola Vucevic $60 million. Quite honestly, I do not know what this team's trying to achieve besides selling tickets and jerseys and food and concessions and all that shit. There's really no direction for this team. We're going to change that today. So I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm just trying to say that if the Bulls want to have any chance at competing in the next five, six, seven years, you got to do something. Because let's be honest with each other. You look at this roster right now. What is this? This is maybe a playing team. I, I mean, that's the nicest thing I can say about them. This is not a contender. And I know two years ago they had the number one seed until the Lonzo injury. Let's be honest, this team's not a contender. Let's just accept the fact that this team probably needs to blow it up, and I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon. So, going over the roster. Obviously, Lonzo Ball likely not playing this season. It sucks. I love watching Lonzo. I'm really happy that he kind of, I don't want to say broke out a little bit, but obviously his career was kind of getting back on track, obviously, before that injury. They brought in Javon Carter. He's here. He's I have no idea who they're going to start. It could be him for all I know. Obviously, Io is here. He's 23 years old. Ended up re-signing with the Bulls this offseason. At that 74 overall, I do like him a little bit. Uh, Carlick Jones is here. Probably somebody that's not going to be playing for me too much. Alex Caruso is here again, just on a little bit of an older side. On a two-year, basically $20 million deal right now, we'll see. Kobe White did end up re-signing. He's really never worked out to what you kind of hope a number seven overall draft pick will, but... I guess he's solid enough to be a backup good rotation piece. Small forward spot. I do like Zach Levine. I'm not going to sit here and say Zach Levine's a bum. He's a little bit overpaid, I think. But again, my team employs Jalen Brown, so I can't really get into that. But again, if you look at Zach Levine and what he provides, is he a number one on a championship caliber team or even a number two? Do you really see that? I don't know. I, I, I really don't. So again, he's good. He's awesome to watch. He's a very good player. Just for me, man, I just don't know the direction of this franchise right now. Dale and Terry's here. He's 21. You have Julian Phillips here as well. Again, maybe a little bit of development. These guys can be in the rotation. In terms of the power forward spot, DeMar DeRozan, Mr. Midrange. And uh, yeah, I mean, in all honesty, DeMar DeRozan's probably a future Hall of Famer. I don't really know if there's much arguing that at this point. Again, though, he's 34. He is an 86 overall, but I'm talking about real life right now. Again, when you look at the landscape of even just the Eastern Conference, you have the Celtics, you have the Bucks, you have, if you want to throw in the Sixers, you have the Miami Heat. All of these teams are the true kind of, I don't want to say bread and butter of what a contender looks like in the East. That's just my take on it anyways. Patrick Williams went number four overall back in 2020. Now, obviously, he's not really going to be a number one option on any team, probably ever, if we're being honest with each other. Just from what we've seen in his time in Chicago. Now, we play him a lot more here today. Who knows what happens? We will see. Tory Craig is here. Terry Taylor is here. I mean, again, these are okay options. As I mentioned, they brought back Nikola Vucevic. And then Andre Drummond is here as well. So that's what I mean. You're in pur purgatory. You are not really on either end of the spectrum. I don't know. For me, that's a shitty position to be in. I feel bad for you, Bulls fans. I'm just trying to give you the reality of the really unfortunate situation that you're in right now. So maybe they're not the worst of the worst because obviously you do have some talented players here. Levine, DeRozan, All-Stars, and uh 
I don't know. I mean, for me, I would way rather be a lot of teams right now than the Bulls. So that's just my take on it. We have some trades. Let's get into those. Before our first trade, I obviously want to emphasize this is not a realistic rebuild. Just want to put that out there because I make trades like this, the one I'm going to make right here, and people are looking at me like, hey, what kind of aspect of realism is that? It's not. DeMar DeRozan actually goes up two overalls if you move to small forward. I did that, and for some reason, the Memphis Grizzlies want to give me former Defensive Player of the Year, Jaron Jackson Jr., who's 10 years younger than DeMar. Along with that, we're getting a first-round draft pick. So that is going to be a future building block for us. I'm ripping off the Band-Aid right now. We're getting the rebuild started. We might suck this year, but that's fine by me. We have a few more trades to go. Our next trade and potentially one of our final deals is going to be coming with the Sacramento Kings. We're sending them Javon Carter, Torrey Craig, and a future second round pick for a future first round pick in 2027. And I'm probably going to butcher this, but Sasha Veznikov. I, I could be butchering that. I have really no idea. But again, this trade is obviously for the first round pick. We're loading up on some assets for two guys that we're probably not going to crack the rotation. So if I kind of give you my thoughts, I'm going to go 10-man rotation here. Obviously in an unrealistic setting where I don't play with injuries on Lonzo Ball, he's going to be playing for me. So I don't really need three point guards. I want to get Io some minutes backing up Lonzo. He will be there. Caruso and White are probably going to be my guys at the shooting guard spot for year one anyways. In terms of the small forward spot, it'll probably be Zach Levine. And then Dale and Terry's probably going to back him up. I mean, again, not a ton of looks like what looks like potential for me, but again, it's probably limited minutes. Then Julian Phillips was a second round pick this past year. We'll see. We might send him to the G League. I don't know yet. Obviously, the new addition of Jaron Jackson Jr. I'm very excited about. See what Patrick Williams can do backing him up. And then Vucevic and Drummond are probably good enough for year one. The reason I'm not trading like Vucevic right now and Zach Levine right now is because they're on multi-year deals. So I could fully embrace the tank, trade both these guys, but I do want to give them somewhat of what I refer to as a, a shot. I want to give them a chance. So I know trading away DeMar, a little bit controversial probably. And again, I'm sorry, Bulls fans, if I uh, you know upset you, hurt your feelings, or said something you disagree with, but... I think it's the honest reality of your situation right now. So let's go ahead and set this rotation for year one. So after making a few trades, we have finally set the rotation and we are ready for year one. As I've said previously, I don't really care if we suck. Hell, I'd probably prefer if we were bad and have a good draft pick. So again, I don't have a lot of faith in this team, but 2K Sim is weird. This team could end up being a playing team. I have really no idea. It's Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso. Obviously a really good, solid defensive backcourt with Lonzo's playmaking skills. Obviously both solid defensive pieces. I don't know. I'll see what happens. I mean, there's really no great option there, but it is what it is. Zach Levine here at the three will all likelihood lead us in scoring. Obviously, a new, very welcomed addition here in Triple J, and I'm very excited to see what he brings to the table. And Nikola Vucevic locking down that center spot. Patrick Williams is going to be our sixth man off the bench. You can technically call him a big man, and it is not often that I have big men as sixth men. But in terms of potential and mixing in overall I think having Williams come off the bench as a six-man is smart. Followed by Kobe White, Andre Drummond, Io DeSumo, and then Dalen Terry. So, not a great bench. Not even a great starting five. But there's a little bit of talent here. And, oh boy, Billy Donovan. Good God. I don't know, man. This team is interesting. And, I don't know, maybe it came out a little hot in this rebuild. I wasn't meaning to do so. But, it just aggravates me, man. I feel bad for Bulls fans. Like, you're just in a piece of shit spot. I don't know. It's just brutal. But yeah, man, this is it for year one. I have no idea how we're going to be. We could be good. We could suck. We'll probably be in the middle. I'll see you guys in year one. The first season for us here in Chicago comes to an end, and it comes with a record of 36 and 46. Now, obviously, I'd prefer that record over 40 and 42, but 36 wins is definitely not bad enough to have a top five pick, which was my goal. It is what it is. Nicole Jokic averages a triple-double and wins an MVP. This dude is ridiculous. Victor Wembanyama, a rookie of the year. Chris Paul, sixth man. Nick Claxton's your deep boy. Shingun, most improved. Giannis is clutch player of the year. And Steve Kerr wins coach of the year. It's good to see they have not changed that pose on Steve Kerr since like 2K16, 17 maybe. It's ridiculous. God bless lazy developers. All right, so let's just take a look right now. Obviously, this is not a playoff team at 36. Oh, my God, we're in the plane. <laughs> you can run from it. You can dread it. You can't avoid it. So, uh, again, I mean, this is kind of where I would expect us to be. We're not great. We're not dog shit, I guess, according to 2K. But, you know, we're not in a good position right now anyway. So, here's a look at the numbers on the year. Everything looks good for Zach Levine. It's just, again, at basically 30 now. Is that going to translate for the rest of the video? That I do not know. So we definitely need to add some more scoring to this team. That kind of goes without being said. In terms of rebounds, it was Vucevic, and assists was Lonzo Ball. So we're technically in the play-in. We have the Pacers here, and uh, I don't really know what's going to happen. I hope we lose and end up in the lottery. We'll see. So what happens? We do end up losing. Beautiful. I did not want to win. 
That's good with me. So let's sim the rest of the playoffs real quick. See what ends up happening here. It is going to be a Phoenix Suns and a Miami Heat NBA Finals. That would be one toxic series. I can't even lie. Good for Miami. Good for Jimmy Butler getting it done. I do hope Jimmy gets a ring at some point in his career. All right, so let's get into the offseason. Let's get into the offseason. It is a very big offseason for us, obviously, with a lot on the horizon. So you can see some retirements right there in terms of staff retirements. Cool. Jersey retirements, just Kyle Lowry, and then the draft lottery time. So I think technically we will have a lottery pick. We're actually projected number nine right now, and then we have 11 from the ball. Or Excuse me, from the Trailblazers. I believe that actually is a lottery protected pick, so I don't think we'll have it. But we're projected number nine, and we sit right there at actually number 10. And then, as you can see, the Blazers were at number 11, which means we'll have their unprotected pick next year. So I can live with that. Number 10 overall is interesting. It's not great, not terrible. Billy Donovan, goodbye. I've had enough. And uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of my next head coach, could go Jacob Underwood. I, ooh, who's OJ Baxter? I don't know about him. Uh, I mean, Popovich would obviously be awesome. It's just not going to happen. Uh, Nate Augustine here has pretty bad defensive ratings. I'll mix it up a little bit. I obviously get Stalfer quite a bit, and I'll try Jacob Underwood today. That feels like a good signing for me. So welcome, Jacob Underwood. Hopefully can lead us to the promised land down the line. We will see. So obviously the number 10 overall pick is a pretty decent pick. It's not a great pick, but number 10 overall is definitely some flexibility with that. We also have a couple assets we could move on from at some point in time, along with a couple contracts I would definitely be willing to trade right now. So let's look into some of those moves right now. The Spurs own the number one overall selection for the second year in a row, and I'm going to see how much interest they would have in possibly acquiring Zach Levine and allowing me to now have the number one overall pick. Now, obviously, I doubt this will go through straight up. They want our first next year unprotected. They want our first in 2028 unprotected, and they'll throw in Trey Jones. Yeah, that doesn't really intrigue me too much, if I'm being completely honest with you. Uh, how about you take Sasha here and... Uh, Nope, I'm not doing that. Kelton Johnson would be nice. I just don't really feel like I need him too much. Um, anybody else I'd be willing to trade you? I mean, I don't have a lot of other contracts. You want Julian Phillips, you can have him. They want two first-round picks, but they will give me, give me Kelton Johnson. <sighs> okay, I look at it like this. That first in 2027 is obviously a decent asset at, right at this point. I don't think it will be that valuable by then. Obviously, this rebuild won't go to then. But And then the Kings pick is just another asset. So we're getting Kelton Johnson. That's actually a really nice pickup. But we're also acquiring the number one overall selection. So we're going to make that deal. Obviously, a pretty big blockbuster there with the Spurs. We now have the number one and ten overall pick in the 2024 NBA draft. So who do I want? I mean, obviously, I can take anybody here. Ron Holland is here. Matas Buzelis. Justin Edwards. Isaiah Collier is here. I mean, we have options. And I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty much between Ron Holland and or Matas Buzela. So, I don't know exactly which one I'm leaning more towards. Obviously, we just traded away a small forward, but we also did acquire a small forward in Kelton Johnson. So, we're going to have to figure this one out. I mean, we really are. Do they still do the... Uh, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Uh, Buzela James Worthy. I'll probably go Ron Holland. You can see he's a B- minus overall. Or that's what our scouting team says. That He's also the number one ranked prospect both according to the Sporting News Big Board and the 2K ranking. So Ron Holland's going to be my guy. Welcome to Chicago. And then I'll sim up to our number 10 overall selection. And uh, Cody Williams is here. Cody Williams is here. I've had some success actually drafting him in the past. Bronny James obviously here would be cool. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna just going to go with Cody Williams. Welcome to the team. Uh, do we have any other picks? Like any seconds? We do not. So let's sim to the end of this draft. Obviously great. Having two prospects that can both be potentially... Very, very good for us. So it's going to be a 78 overall for Ron Holland, a 76 overall for Cody Williams. We're now going in a positive direction. We may suck again next year, but we've gotten younger. We have some guys with some potential. It's exactly what I was hoping for. Team player options, Lonzo declines. I'll bring back Terry, and I'll bring back Taylor. Well, I guess both Terry's funny enough. But uh, Lonzo, somebody I do want to get back at only 26 years old. I will qualify Patrick Williams. He'll probably remain on the bench for basically the entirety of this video. But that's good with me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, free agency-wise, I don't really have a lot of money. Not that I was going to go make a major signing anyways. I actually don't have any sort of rights on uh, Lonzo Ball. That's pretty tricky, but the game's going to let me bring him back anyways. So let's just sign Lonzo Ball back on a three-year deal. And then in terms of Patrick Williams, I'll wait. I'll actually end up paying him. Andre Drummond can go. Justin Lewis can go. We do have a million-dollar trade exception on DeMar. So uh, excited to have Lonzo back here. Obviously, that's good. He played pretty well for us last year. I will wait on Patrick Williams one more day. And uh, let's just go ahead. How much are you asking for? Jesus Christ. That's insane. That's fucking wild. That's beyond me. Uh, it's, it's weird because, you know, I have, like, specific sliders for contracts, so guys don't, you know, have contracts like this. It's very, very weird. But, I mean, I, I got to do it now. I mean, it doesn't really matter too much. We'll probably figure out a trade at some point because I'm not paying them that. But 
We'll see. For year one, it's probably fine. Or, well, year two. Uh, okay, so we definitely want to make some sort of change to the shooting guard spot. Cody Williams is going to be our starter. And then I think Kobe White will come off the bench. It's probably the end of the line for Caruso. 30 years old now, probably going to regress a little bit. Maybe send him to a contender or something like that. So there's definitely some trades coming. We're officially moving on from Nikola Vucevic. We are acquiring a center who is 11 years younger and overall I think is going to be an upgrade, especially defensively, in Walker Kessler. So we're sending Vucevic and Dale and Terry over to Utah. Kessler and Trenton Wadford will be coming back here to Chicago. So honestly, that felt like a really good trade. I'm surprised we didn't have to give up a single draft pick to get a center with a lot more potential than Nikola Vucevic. So honestly, I was looking for a backup center anyways because I didn't bring back Andre Drummond and Trenton Wofford honestly is probably going to be that for at least one year. So I'm excited there. In terms of any other major moves, there's probably nothing crazy coming. I think I'll probably end up still starting Ron Holland over Keldon Johnson, just you know, kind of based off potential a little bit. I also just took him number one overall. It's kind of hard to not start a number one overall pick. Uh, so at this point, I think the only trades left are probably Caruso, and then if I can you know, maybe get any bites on Terry Taylor, we'll see what we got. We wanted to send Alex Caruso to a contender, and we are doing exactly that. We're going to send him, Terry Taylor, and Carlick Jones all to Miami. We are going to be picking up the contract of Duncan Robinson. It appears it is the last year, along with the future first-round pick. So kind of recuperating one of those assets we included in the big deal with San Antonio. And then, honestly, Duncan Robinson probably won't really play for us. He has actually another year after this. Is it a player or a team? Uh, oh, no, it's just a... Okay, that's interesting. Nonetheless, Duncan Robinson's here. I'll be able to move him probably next offseason, but for now, it's fine. He probably won't play too much. So I'm really liking the direction we've kind of taken with this team. I think it is much better than what we started out with. I'll see you guys at the start of year number two. It is now officially the start of year two for us here in Chicago. We had a very big offseason with a lot of big trades. We moved on from longtime star Zach Levine. We moved on from Nikola Vucevic. And we we're ready for a new era to start here in the Windy City. It's going to be Lonzo Ball, Cody Williams, Ron Holland, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Walker Kessler. So maybe overall-wise, this isn't the highest potential starting five, but I think it makes the most sense. I mean, we just took both these guys top 10. I'm going to start them both. I think it makes the most sense, at least in my opinion. Obviously, I'm very excited about Walker Kessler as well. Ben Chini is going to be led by newly acquired Kelton Johnson. You have Patrick Williams here, Kobe White, Io DeSumo, and then Trendon Watford. So, I mean, we're still eating the contract of Duncan Robinson. That's fine for a season. I don't really have much other than that. Uh, we actually don't own our first round pick this year. The Spurs have it. I don't know if that traces all the way back to the DeMar DeRozan trade. I don't think it probably would. But, uh, yeah, I don't think I traded that pick there. I don't think we had it at all. So, yeah, man, it is top 10 protected. I don't think we'll be that bad. We just probably won't have our first this year. I can live with it. I will see you guys the end of year two here in Chicago. The love that 2K has for Darius Garland has clearly translated from 2K23 all the way to 2K24 because they still think he's an MVP caliber player, awarding him that here. And, uh, yeah, year two. I mean, hell, it was a very good season, but... I don't know, man. Uh, we go 39 and 43 on the year. Obviously, when we first took over this team, they won 40 games. And yeah, we just won 39 year two. So you might be saying to yourself, well, that's not really an improvement. And you're right. In terms of win loss, it's not. But at least this time, we have some players with some potential. That's the main difference for me, anyways. Bronny James, your rookie of the year. We had the opportunity to draft him. We obviously did not do that. Now, let's be honest if we drafted him here in Chicago, he probably would not have been in as big of a role as he clearly was in Minnesota. Chris Paul, once again, sixth man of the year. Giannis is your deep boy. Most improved goes to Jonathan Kaminga. John Morant's your clutch player of the year. Oh, yeah. JB Baker, staff coach of the year for the 69 and 13 Cleveland Cavaliers. So let's just take a full look at the standings right now. We are once again in the play in this time as an eight seed. I can live with it. Again, doesn't matter to me whether we make the playoffs or not. I mean, obviously, in real life, some experience in the playoffs is always good here in 2K. I don't think it matters as much. So here's a look at the numbers on the year. We obviously got a little bit more spread out in terms of the scoring because obviously we moved on in a guy who can score the ball at a very high level. And Zach Levine, we replaced him with some younger players along with some uh, other nice pieces around this team. So uh, let's just dive into the plan. I mean, again, we're probably not going to go very far no matter what. Here's a look at the Orlando Magic out of Drew Holiday. Interesting, and uh, yeah, let's just sim through the game. We actually ended up losing, which means we're going to the second round of the play-in. Uh, let me just sim through this game real quick, sim through game. And we're going to be taking on the Philadelphia 76ers to see who gets to finish up as the eighth seed and take on the Cleveland Cavaliers in round one. So uh, yeah, I mean, the Sixers team, feel free to beat us. I don't really care. We do lose. Okay, so that's fine by me. Obviously, a very, very big and crucial offseason coming ahead. I think we do have our work cut out for us. I'm excited to see what happens. It is going to be Steph Curry and the Warriors taking on Julius Randle in the New York Knicks in the finals. And shout out to New York, man. Julius Randle balled out in the finals, wins himself a finals MVP. So, final offseason. 
It is time. This is a very, very important offseason, and it is one that we definitely have to take full advantage of. Chris Paul, Hall of Fame, no shock there. He also gets his jersey retired with the Los Angeles Clippers. So draft lottery time. Let's take a look at it. I don't think we've traded. Oh, that Portland pick. It's unprotected, which means we're probably going to have a top seven, eight, nine, whatever it ends up being pick. It is, sits right there at number seven. That's beautiful. I'm probably not going to draft anybody. It'll probably be used as a trade piece. And I say that because we already have a lot of young talent on the team. I think there's room for some growth somewhere. Uh, we're still good with Jacob Underwood. I mean, again, it wasn't a great season by any means, but didn't really have exactly kind of the tools to get that done. So, number seven overall pick. Obviously, we have some options. Let's dive into some trades. We're going to see how much interest the Philadelphia 76ers would have in potentially moving on from Tyrese Maxey. Now, obviously, he'd be a significant upgrade to this team, and uh, I would love to have him. I really would. So, Kobe White, Trenton Wofford, and our number seven overall pick is my offer for Tyrese Maxey. Again, would be a significant overall upgrade in this team, and overall-wise, just a very, very good player. So, are they going to take that? Wow, they do. Okay. Simple enough. Welcome to the team, Tyrese Maxey. He's going to take over the starting shooting guard responsibilities. Cody Williams will move to the bench. So, in terms of anything else major, I mean, Ron Holland, obviously starting him in a championship hopeful season is a bit of a risk at only 20 years old, but he had a really solid rookie campaign for us. So, I'm not going to sit here and pretend he was some weakness. And other than that, there's probably nothing major. So, I like it, man. I really do kind of like how this team's kind of shaped out. We're not going to be drafting anybody this year. Let's head up to team player options. Uh, I'm not bringing back Duncan Robinson, but Walker Kessler... Welcome back to the group. Okay, so qualifying, we have nothing here. And then in terms of our major free agents, it's a very good free agency class. Unfortunately, we just don't have any money. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to sign Giannis or Tatum or Jimmy, but, yeah, I mean, just the funds just really are not there right now, unfortunately. So let's take a look at this group right now. Lonzo, Io. I think I'm comfortable enough with Lonzo as our starting point guard. The man's an 86 overall, and he's playing relatively well for what his role is. Obviously, new addition here with Maxi Cody Williams now slides to the bench. Cody Williams had a good rookie year, but in a championship hopeful year, I had to make an upgrade either at the shooting guard or the small forward spot. And I think Ron Holland has had a bit of a better rookie season. Uh, Kelton Johnson is an elite backup in terms of backing up Ron Holland. Power forward spot, Triple J. Patrick Williams is still here. I don't know, man. I mean, this contract is a little bit ludicrous, but it is what it is. So I'm going to find ourselves a backup center for Walker Kessler. And other than that, there's probably not else or nothing else major coming. Gavon Looney might be my guy. I mean, he's 29, so a little bit on the older side for 2K, but I can live with it. Let's sign Kavon Looney to a, a three-year deal. It's one year. It's the final year. And uh, obviously that championship pedigree that Kavon Looney definitely does have, I'm excited to have here in Chicago. So yeah, man, this is it. This is going to be the final roster moving forward. I'm hoping this team has what it takes to get it done. Time will tell. See you guys at the start of the final year. We have obviously taken some risks throughout this video, and I'm really hoping that in this final season of this rebuild that those risks do pay off. I like this team a lot. I'm just really hoping they can kind of finally get over that last hump. And I say last hump, I mean get into the playoff because we've yet to do that. So this is a risk no matter which way you kind of look at it, but I am excited to see how everything goes here. It's going to be Lonzo Ball, new addition Tyrese Maxey in the backcourt, Ron Holland here at that small forward spot, Triple J, and then Walker Kessler locking down the front court. The bench unit is really good. It's a much better bench than what we started out with. Keldon Johnson here is our sixth man, followed by Cody Williams, Io DeSumo, Patrick Williams, and the new addition, Kevon Looney. So this is a risk no matter which way you look at it. I've said that now. Now. and uh i don't know man i like the team a lot i really do so i'm hoping we can win but time will tell i'll see you guys at the end of the final year somehow some way this team just broke the nba record for most wins in a regular season i have no idea i mean i thought we were good i didn't think we were that good but when 2k blesses me i don't question it 74 and 8 that was our regular season record but this team has not made the playoffs yet, and we are hoping for a very, very successful playoff run. Shea Gildas Alexander is your MVP. Cooper Flags, your rookie of the year. Wow, that is a scary duo. DJ Wagner, sixth man of the year in Dallas. Victor Wembanyama is your deep boy. DJ Wagner also wins most improved. Giannis is your clutch player of the year. And Jacob Underwood with 74 wins, I think he's going to win coach of the year. So, my God, man. I mean, I am I'm feeling good. I, I really am. And again, I really do hope that this team can go far and have a long a very prosperous playoff run. Just look at the numbers on the year. Tyrese Maxey was a beautiful, very welcomed addition to this team. Ron Holland took that next step. That's great to see. Triple J, Kelton Johnson off the bench, Lonzo, Cody Williams, Walker Kessler. I mean, everybody just fits their role really, really well in this team. And again, I think that has a lot to do with the success. I truly do. So who's it going to be? It's the eight-seeded Toronto Raptors. Spencer Dinwiddie, Grady Dick, Scotty Barnes, Siakam, Nikola Vucevic, our old friend. Uh, I traded him to Utah, I thought. I don't know. Uh, Derek White is here. Jakob Pertl. So the, the Raptors are a team with a lot of depth, which is obviously tricky. 
But uh, I think we have the better team. I really do. And uh, we end up sweeping. Beautiful. Moving on to the Charlotte Hornets. Interesting. LaMelo Ball, Quentin Grimes. You got Brandon Miller here, Trey Murphy, Mark Williams. I, th I I think we're a lot better. I'm very happy we're facing them instead of the Cavs. I mean, that's oh, wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong matchup. We're up 3-1 right now, and we win in five. Beautiful. And it's the Atlanta Hawks here in the Eastern Conference Finals. So, I mean, the Hawks are good. Obviously, have Trey Young and the uh, pretty good bench, I would say. They're just so loved by 2K, it's going to be a pain in the ass. So let's see what ends up happening here. We are currently 2-2 with them. We go down 3-2. Going to Game 7, and we win. And we're taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder here. Lonzo Ball, interesting conference finals. Oh, my God. Holy shit. All right, here's a look at the Thunder. They're insane. Shea Gildas, Alexander, Josh, they have Matas Buzelas, Jalen Williams, Jalen Duran, Chad Holmgren off the bench. Manuel quickly Cooper. Oh, my God. This team is fucking wild. I don't know if we can win this series. Oh my god, hang with me. Oh my god. Oh my god. I what? Wow. I thought that team was gonna blow us out of the water. And we're up 3 0 right now and hopefully about a sweep. Can we battle back a little bit? Have some balls. Show some fight. I don't know. I'll try. I'm, I'm dog shit at this game, but I'll, I'll get a little bit of gameplay. So I know this video's probably been long enough, and obviously I'm sure many of you know I suck at this game, but I'm going to give it my all, and I'm going to try to, uh, yeah, clutch it out so we can go for the sweep. I mean, that would obviously be cool. I would love to do that. So, I mean, again, if we don't, hopefully we can. Oh, my God, SGA. I, if, we, uh, if we don't end up winning this one, hopefully we can end up winning the next one. Lonzo Ball. We just cut inside. That's not where I was going. Uh, Kelton Johnson working the low. Okay, we're getting a little bit bullied now. Ron Holland, can I get a screen coming up here from Kelton Johnson, who appears to be playing the four? Easy layup. Thank you very much. Okay, beautiful. Ron Holland's got 21-9 and 2 on the night. It is back to a two-point game as the clock strikes two minutes to go. Here we go. Can we lock down Shea Gildas? Alexander Cook, he's... Our ball? Oh, my God. Bulls ball. Bulls ball. Holy shit. Oh my god. In yesterday's video, or two days ago, no, yesterday's video, uh, I actually had to get gameplay against the Thunder with SGA, and he just torched me the entire time. This time, I'm ready to go. I'm feeling good right now. I still suck at this game. There's no denying that, but we're in a little bit of a better position right now. Let's get Ron Hall on the ball here. It worked for us last time. Can we just cut? Buzelis is not playing any defense on us. Come on. Triple J, give me a good screen. Give me a good screen. Down inside to Triple J. Go up. What are these animations, dude? Oh my god. Let's try this again. It's got we gotta go quick. Jaron, 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 Jaron. That's a bad shot. It goes in anyways, and we are knotted up at 88. 135 left to go on the verge of a sweep. We're about to sweep the thunder out of their own building, potentially. Hang with me. You never know what's gonna happen. Shea Gildas Alexander dancing all over us, gets inside and gets the easy. Easy floater to go. That's uh, that's not good. It's not exactly what we were looking for. I'm going to try to do something that might be a little bit stupid. This, this could end up backfiring a little bit. But if I want to put a dagger in it, I got to do this, I think. Let's kick it over here. Tyrese Maxey for three. No, he misses it. He misses it. And now it comes down to basically everything we got here. Inside Jalen Duran. Easy layup. God damn it, man. God damn it. We choked. I would be much more upset if this was like a game seven, obviously. But uh, yeah, I mean, if we don't score here, I'm just going to sim to the end, and then we'll we'll go on to game five, which which would honestly be fine with me, anyways. That was a stupid shot. I'm sorry about this gameplay. I don't even know if I'll show this, but let's sim to the end. I don't even know if I'm going to show that gameplay or not. If I do, and you guys actually enjoyed it, I'm sorry because I'm sure it was very bad. Okay, hang on a damn minute. We're not going to fucking blow a 3-0 lead, right? There's no way. There's no goddamn way. Oh my god. Oh my god. This game. I mean, honestly, it's just as unrealistic as ever. It, it really is. Yep, we're blowing a 3-0 lead, definitely. Okay, yep, I've had enough 2K for today. Wow, okay. Well, I thought we had a fun rebuild. I mean, we put together a good team, and then, uh, yeah... Ronnie and the boys over at 2K decided to bend me over and fuck me. So, yeah, I'm not really happy with the ending of this video. But overall-wise, I mean, it was great to win 74 games. Great to take a 3-0 lead in the finals. And then just wham-bam Michael Sam right in the fucking ass. I mean, good God. 
Okay, I'm probably going to say something stupid if I keep talking. So I'm going to end the video here. I hope you guys did enjoy watching. And uh, I had a ton of fun with this one. Or, well, for the most part. As always, let me know any other video ideas down below in the comment section. And uh, yeah, man, tough one. Tough way to end a fun rebuild. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.